Hi. It's December 10th, Thursday. And uh, I don't know, I'm just <laughs> kind of making a, want to make a quick little video here just for uh, posterity. So I can look back on it and go, yeah, that sucked. <laughs> Hopefully things are better when I watch this in the future, but this week has been horrible. Um, I'm just waiting for the dryer to cool down now, so I figured I would just mess around here and um, talk about a little couple, few things. Um, oh, dryer is cooled down. Light's green. I can turn it off. So, we're in the middle of this move, this real estate deal, to move our house and eventually the shop after that. And uh, things went sideways pretty good with that with it. Um, I mean, I think it's still going to happen. I hope. Um, fingers crossed, I guess, whatever. But uh, we found out that we are actually the first people to ever buy this house. The, the current owner is an 88-year-old lady who, you know, 88 years old. She's got dementia and she's in assisted living and we're dealing with her son and stepson. But um, her and her husband built the house back in the 1960s and she's owned it ever since. So this house has never been sold before, which means nobody's ever done like a title search. Nobody's done a survey, any of that stuff. We're the first lucky people to ever have to do that with this property. And uh, it turned up some problems. So... The detached garage where most of my print shop is going to go in is uh, a foot over the property line into the neighbor's property. Um, a foot doesn't sound like a lot, but in real estate land, that's a lot. It's a big problem. Um, and the shed, which, whatever, I'll knock the shed down. I'll move the shed. I'll tie the shed to my bumper and pull it out of there. I don't care. It'd be great to have a shed, but... <laughs> If, uh, if that's one of the only things holding this up, I don't care. I'll demolish it. But the shed is about three feet over the property line on a different neighbor's property. Um, now, it's probably been that way since the 60s or 70s. Maybe the 80s. And nobody gave a shit, you know? Um, probably the neighbors won't give a shit now. We hope. Um, but it still involves lawyers. We got to, uh, you know... Their lawyers talking to the neighbors. We got to draw up an agreement. We got to get everybody on the same page with it. Um, so that's what's going on right now, and it's delaying our closing on the house. Um, we also found out through the title search that there's two uncleared mortgages on the house that nobody knew about from the 60s. So it doesn't, I mean, it's not a big deal, really. Like, They've been on there since the 60s. They're for relatively low amounts of money. Nobody's come looking to collect on it. So it's probably something that has been taken care of a long time ago. And just uh, she never got the paperwork to like officially clear it off the mortgage or didn't even know they were on there. I guess back in the 60s, uh, contractors and, uh, and uh, even credit card companies would just put mortgages on people's houses as collateral without even telling them. So, like, you'd have your kitchen remodeled, and you'd have a payment plan with a contractor to repay it, the work. And uh, they would just put a mortgage on your house. So, if you didn't pay it, you know, most people obviously just paid it, and it was never a problem. But, you know, then if you didn't know about it, you wouldn't then go through the steps to clear. You know what I mean? So, we're trying to figure all that out. Um, the title is insurable, just not marketable. So we can still get mortgage insurance. So if somebody comes after it, it they're not, you know, we're, we're not going to be the ones having to pay it or, or worry about it. It'll be, you know, the insurance company's problem at that point, the title insurance company. But uh, it's still a pain in the ass thing we got to deal with. So it's pushed our closing date back significantly. We still don't have a closing date. Um, but we have to sell our house. <laughs> That's a separate deal with a separate buyer. I, you know, obviously it's not related our house is good to go no problems at all the guy that's buying it wants to move in <laughs> we don't have a place to go so this week has been i mean i look like shit i feel like shit this stress is 
fucking killing me. Um, so, yeah, the way it's going right now, we have to close on our house on the 17th. So a week from today, we have to be out of our house. The house we're buying, that deal won't be ready by then. So it looks like we're going to be moving all our stuff into storage, our entire house, and moving back in with mom for a little bit. Not something I ever wanted to do. I, I don't know, man. Debating... Uh, we didn't have two little dogs. We'd just get a hotel room <laughs> for as long as it takes. But trying to find a place that'll take dogs right now is uh, stuff. Uh, I don't know. So that's been my life. And on top of that, then you've got the pandemic is playing havoc with the entire supply chain for t-shirts and apparel in general. So trying to get enough shirts here to be able to print for people it's ugh, man i don't know i just hope things get better yeah so i've been cleaning out my house packing moving things into storage bit by bit you know just stuff that we don't want movers messing with you know um for the past couple weeks but this week i really had to like step it up on that so I don't know. Things suck. But clearing out my attic, I did find some kind of cool shit. Check this out. This box has some of the first stuff I ever printed in it. Didn't even know it was up there still. These are like some patches I printed for my band. So, I mean, if you're watching this, you've probably... Well, at this point, the only people that are following me on YouTube are people that know me. So, you probably do know, obviously, about my band, Ed Gein, but... If, you, if the YouTube uh, algorithm sent you here somehow, I don't know what the hell you're watching to get the, your algorithm this screwed up to get here. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was in this band. And uh, these are some of the first things I ever printed was patches for it. And <laughs> this was printed on, this is a piece of, like, drop cloth like you'd get at the hardware store, you know, just, like, really crappy fabric. I was just kind of testing out my, my setup and look at that glossy, thick plastisol. And so this is just me learning stuff and I sold patches when we were out on tour and actually, you know, made enough, made enough on patches in a night usually to be able to like get some dinner. <laughs> that was nice <laughs> being able to eat on tour. <laughs> yeah. So print some straight edge patches back in the day too. That was, Yeah. So some of the, this actually may have been the first shirt I ever printed. It's a two color. This one, I think it looks like, I don't know, you probably can't see that on the, yeah, it's just going to show up as white, but it's uh scorched. Like I burned the crap out of the ink. So there's like beige marks all over it. So yeah, it's pretty cool finding like all these. This is one of our display <laughs> pieces from the, we only printed the, a few of these. It's kind of a stupid design. I just whatever threw it together really fast this is cool this design we sold so many of these shirts this design over the years but this is one of the first ones that i that i actually printed um and i don't know if it'll show up but the blue actually has a little bit of silver like sparkle in it so there's probably only a few dozen printed with this like kind of blue ink with a little bit of silver shimmer added to it all the rest were just like a standard baby blue that, you know, we had, we were hiring, like we were touring enough that I couldn't print for us after a little while. I started learning to print to be able to print for my band. And then we ended up touring so much that I couldn't print for us anymore because we were on the road too much. So we had hired somebody else to start printing for us. So some of the early Ed Gein merch was printed by me and then it started getting printed by somebody else. This design, we had our van stolen in uh, Ohio. We were on, in, on tour, heading to Indianapolis, or heading to India, somewhere in Indiana, I don't know if it was Indianapolis, but, and uh, stopped to get some, like, waters and, like, toothpaste and stuff like that. Came out from the store, and our van was gone. Just an empty spot in the parking lot. So, we printed this shirt after that as kind of like a, 
I mean, it was sort of a fundraiser. Well, it was, I mean, yeah, kind of a fundraiser-ish thing. But this this print came out like you can see the white underbase peeking out from behind it. So that we use this as like it's just a display shirt. That's why it's got all this tape crap on it. But yeah, that was uh, our record label kind of helped us out with these shirts as a way to kind of I don't know replace some gear and try and get a van again. But yeah, I don't know. So it's cool that I still had this up in the attic. Just thought I'd show a few pieces from it. I don't even know if we ended up selling this one. We may have. I can't even remember. If we did, we only printed maybe a dozen or two of this design. So if you have one of these, it's, you know, there's not many of them out there. Found this too. This is one of the first shirts I ever designed. I didn't print these. This is before I even started printing, but... Uh, the band that all the Ed Gein dudes were in before Ed Gein was Beyond Fall, a little kind of local metal band. And uh, I just did this design for it. Um, I think this was, this might have even been before I joined Beyond Fall that I did this design. Or it was like right when I joined. I can't remember. But that's Graham. That's a picture of Graham, or the guitar player that I took, I think, at the Lost Horizon. And just threw that. I think I put this together in like Microsoft Word or something like that. Like it was before I even had Photoshop. <laughs> So we're talking like, this was probably like 98, 99, probably 99. And then all these were from like early 2000s. I think I started printing in like 2001, maybe 2002 at the latest. So yeah, those are, Jesus, man, almost 20 year old shirts. No, wait. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. Wow. 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 <laughs> That's a long time ago. So, I mean, being in a band is fun. I highly recommend it to any kid. Learn to play an instrument. Go do something. You know, because then you'll end up a old, slightly disgruntled person with a... Uh, Severe case of uh, imposter syndrome like me. <laughs> I wouldn't trade it for the world, though. It was awesome. Got to see the entire country. Got to go to Europe. Got to play shows in front of all kinds of people. Meet all kinds of people. It was awesome. So, you know, you're basically homeless living in a van the whole time. But, uh, scrounging for food and, and stuff. But, I don't know. It's awesome. That's why I started printing and kind of where I'm at now. But... Now I'm going to be homeless again. <laughs> Except I don't have a tour van to sleep in. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. So there might not be any videos for me for a while because i got to figure all this crap out. So, all right. Bye.